Hi, I'm Melissa. Welcome to your at home Pilates workout with a prenatal focus. I'm from 10 Health and Fitness and how this is going to work today is I'll introduce each exercise and then start to demonstrate it so you can follow along as well. I'll give lots of different tips and cues along the way so just listen out to those as much as you can. Now all you need today is a mat or just some soft carpet works well if you don't have a mat, a broomstick or other similar pole like option, a chair and also a resistance or a stretching band. Now if you don't have one of those, don't worry, just a couple of bottles of water would work well as well as a couple of light hand weights. Okay, now at 10, our main focus is on quality of movement. So bearing this in mind, it's going to be really important that you simply stop and reset at any point throughout the session should you feel the need to do so. Okay, that's perfectly normal, so please go ahead and do that if you feel that you need to reset. All right, please also only participate in this class if you've already checked with your GP or your midwife that it's okay for you to participate in Pilates. While we've taken the utmost care and we've really prioritized keeping this safe for both you and your baby, it's important to remember that everyone's bodies are different. Okay, so if anything feels wrong for you to do, please just stop straight away. Okay, and then either go and check with your GP or your midwife, bearing in mind that any contraindications or conditions that you may have throughout your pregnancy are probably watch out factors for you to not participate as well. All right, let's get ready to go now. So feel free to pause your video while you go and find those props if you don't have them yet, and then we'll get ready to start. Okay, so while we've tried to keep today's class plan as broad as possible, so you don't have to modify things too much dependent on what trimester you're in, one or two times we have mentioned different progressions available dependent on what trimester you're in, so whether that's first, second or third trimester. Another really important thing to bear in mind throughout the session is your pelvic floor activation. Now, if you're already really comfortable with understanding and knowing how to activate and use your pelvic floor for our class, feel free to skip this next little section. If not though, please definitely do listen out as I explain in a little bit more detail about our pelvic floor. So, our pelvic floor, by the way, we all have one, pregnant or not pregnant. Sometimes there's a little bit of confusion around that. It just becomes particularly important to understand during pregnancy. Your pelvic floor runs from the front to the back of your pelvis, kind of like a sling or a hammock running all the way from the front to the back. Now we want to gently think of activating that pelvic floor in line with when we gently activate into our core, okay? We're actually meaning to do it all at once. When you activate your pelvic floor, it should feel like it's going up a little bit inside you, kind of like an elevator. Now we don't want to take that elevator all the way up to the top floor. Instead you only want to go to about the third floor, alright? So we think of activating our pelvic floor to about 30%. It's also really important that we can completely relax our pelvic floor. So I'd like you to think of doing this at the end of each exercise as well. Okay, now everything I've just been talking about doing, activating your pelvic floor throughout class, is particularly important for first and second trimester. Once you're in your third trimester, if you're planning on having a natural birth, then it sometimes becomes a little bit more important for you to just concentrate on relaxing that pelvic floor as you prepare for labor. All right, now bear in mind that I'm a Pilates instructor, okay, so first and foremost, it's always best to listen to your medical professional instead. Let's try and take in as much of that as possible. Don't stress over it though. It does take a little bit of practice to get that pelvic floor going, okay, that's completely normal. Feel free to stop and have some self-practice at any point if you like, and just try and integrate it into the exercises as much as possible. Let's get moving now. Okay, so we're going to get ready for our pelvic tilts now. Let's start with our feet evenly distributed underneath each hip, standing nice and tall, and let's roll the shoulders back a couple of times. Now I'm going to face side on so you can see my movement a little better, but you can just stay as you are. 
We're going to soften our knees, but stay nice and tall, really lifting yourself and baby up and out of those hips. Then we just gently start to tuck the tailbone before releasing it back the other way. So we're making our way gently through some controlled pelvic tilts. Lovely. Now you can place your hands wherever works best for you to help you guide those hips back and forth. Imagining that your pelvis is a bowl of water and you're gently letting the water fall out the back and the front of the bowl. Good, we're trying to do this, staying nice and tall without moving the ribs, without letting the knees rock in and out, as we just ease out some of that tension that tries to build up in our lower back, and really get a good awareness of our pelvis. Okay, let's stand up out of that, and then carefully make your way down to the floor. We're going to move into a little bit of a hip flexor release now. So let's take a nice big step forward with our right foot, making sure the knee is right above your ankle. And then we're going to reach forward, so lengthen through the front of your left hip as we then swoop that left arm up to the ceiling. We lift up, 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 and then over, maybe adding in a little bit of rotation if that feels good for you, before slowly returning out of that. Let's try that again. We reach forward. Now this time think of squeezing that left side of your bottom. That's going to help release off the hip flexors more. All right, so we're aiming for length here. Try not to just collapse down into the hips, forcing the stretch, but instead gently reach up and through it. Good, now feel free to use a wall or a chair perhaps to help keep you steady. We're going to go just a couple more times here keeping it nice and slow and controlled as we breathe throughout. One more. Good. Keep lifting up and out of the hips, drawing bump in towards you slightly as we do. Trying not to twist and turn through the pelvis or the knee. Nice. Gently bring the legs back together. And then when you're ready, we'll go straight into our second side. So your left foot steps forward this time, knee right above the ankle, square off the pelvis, and then gently lean forward, thinking of reaching through the front of that right hip and squeezing into that same glute, your right glutes this time. We're moving with the right arm, lengthening and then gently twisting through the body before slowly returning. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, move into the next round. Lovely. Reaching through this. Remembering to gently squeeze those right glutes. That'll not only help to keep you steady, but it will also encourage the body to release off those right hip flexors a little bit more. Now, this is a really important one to, for everyone to do, especially while being pregnant, as our hip flexors do typically get pretty tight. Okay, this can occur just from sitting down more than what you normally would. It's really nice to try and release them off now. Okay, let's gently start to leave that one there when you're ready. Okay, so for this one, you want to stand facing in towards the door. So have the door open on the other side to you. One foot in front of the other, arms out at the sides. We're gently then going to press our chest back and forth. So we're really trying to open across the tight chest muscles, not just push the rib cage forward. Okay, so try that again. One foot in front of the other, gently reaching the body forward, opening across the chest and the shoulders. Should feel a lovely, gentle, opening sensation of a stretch there. Good. Just a couple more times, thinking of standing nice and tall as we do this. And then when you're ready, you can change feet. So the hips and the shoulders are staying nice and square. Watch that you're not lifting the shoulders here either. Just a gentle rocking back and forth through each foot to allow that chest to open up. Lovely. One more time there. Nice, well done. Okay, we're getting ready for some side lying work now. So I'd like you to use your towel. First trimester ladies, you may not need it if your bump's not so big yet. 
Everyone else though, to help support Bump, let's place that towel underneath our waist. Just adjust it so it feels comfortable and supportive for you. As we lie down on our sides, taking lots of care to really align your pelvis, one hip bone on top of the other, knees one on top of the other, and ankles one on top of the other. Nice long spine. And then we're going to really focus on squeezing into the left side of your bottom. We're using those left glutes first as we slowly clam, lifting the leg up and then back down again. Good. So we're keeping this really smooth and we're absolutely focusing on squeezing into that left side of your bottom every single time when you go to lift that leg. Okay, now just adjust any time you need. We want to really keep the pelvis aligned here. This is very important for your pelvic stability and you'll get a lot more out of it the more steady you can keep that pelvis, trying not to rock back onto the bottom. Lovely. Let's exhale as we lift the leg. Inhale as we control and squeeze it back down. Good. Gently keeping baby hung, tugged in towards us as we do this. Now you'll notice I've started to increase my external rotation range a little bit here, but I'm really being really careful to not rock back on my hip as I do it. So the pelvis is square, squeezing the glutes and just allowing that leg to rotate a little bit more now. Good. Now I just want you to work with your comfortable range. Okay, we're not trying to force or increase our range here. We're just really strengthening up the range that your hip already has. Good. So if we're able to move in our legs now this way, it's really important that the glutes are actually strong enough to support that. Good. Let's straighten the legs now, still keeping the hips aligned, one on top of the other, bump hugged in towards you. And then we're going to keep the legs straight as we again squeeze the left side of your bottom and just do a few reps here, lifting and lowering that leg. You'll probably find it's a little bit harder to balance now, okay? So you'll need a little bit more drawing in of the abdominals, helping to keep you steady. Awesome. Then we can start to slowly reach that forward, that foot forward rather, and then glide it back to the starting positions in line with your hip. Good. We're trying to keep the leg up at the same height as we do this, slowly floating it forward, squeezing the glutes to press it back as we make our way into our side lying straight leg kick. Lovely. So this one's all about control and stability. Getting the obliques, the abs, the glutes all working together. Nice to support you through this movement. Really important that you keep concentrating on squeezing those glutes, okay? For most of us, our glutes tend to be quite stubborn, so they won't necessarily work unless we teach them to. Let's hold that leg there and gently circle four times now, keeping the pelvis really still. Then to finish off four times the other way. That's it. Keep squeezing. Once you've done four in each direction, lower down. Awesome. And then gently rub out those glutes. Well done, everyone. Hopefully feel that feels good. Let's start to carefully make our way however works for you and Bump to do so. Turn around, stay looking at your screen, but just make sure your feet are going the other way now. Take a moment to adjust the towel. Check that everything's comfortable and supported as we lie on our side, stacking your shoulders, your hips, your knees, and your ankles all directly one on top of the other. This time I want you to really concentrate on the right side of your glutes doing the work. So squeeze, squeeze, squeeze them to lift that leg and then press and control it back down. Nice, so it's really important that we keep thinking about our quality of movement here. Most people could simply throw their leg up and down, okay, doing this quickly. But I want you to really teach your body to activate into the right areas. Go, keep that pelvis steady, stabilizing you properly. Good, giving ourselves proper strength, control and support. Nice. On your next one, you can start to allow that leg to externally rotate a little bit more. Good. Almost thinking of the top hip staying forward while you open the knee back a little bit. Again, we're absolutely not wanting to force this range. We're just making sure that the range you already have is strengthened and supported. Exhaling on the way up. 
inhaling on the way back down. Now my glutes are starting to feel pretty good right now. Hopefully yours are too. Lovely, helping us to counteract all that time that we normally spend sitting on our bottoms. Let's get them actually doing something now as well. Okay, straighten out those legs. Keep the pelvis steady. Draw the tummy in slightly, hugging bump towards you. As we do a few reps up and down of that leg. Definitely not thinking of kicking the leg up, but instead squeezing and lengthening. Reaching your head and your feet far away from one another. Okay, on the next one, keep that foot up at hip height. And then we can slowly start to reach it forward in our side line, straight leg kick, before squeezing the back of the leg, the back of the bottom to push that foot back. So let's think of our abdominals helping us as we glide the leg forward. And our glute max, the back of your bottom, helping us as we reach that leg backwards. Good, now I'm flexing and then pointing my foot as I do this. Okay, it's a great idea if you wanna add that in, but if you find that confusing, don't worry about it, okay? Just keep the legs supported as you float back and forth. Good, all right, on your next one, we can start to hold that in line with our bottom. Gently circle four times one way, then four times the other. You're still squeezing, you're still breathing. Well done. Then take a little break, rub out those glutes. Awesome work. We're going to start making our way onto all fours now. So we'll carefully place our hands right underneath our shoulders and our knees right underneath our hips. Now as we do this, we want to maintain a nice long neutral spine, okay, including lengthening through the back of your neck. So try not to look all the way up or down. We're staying lifted in our tummy and we want to really press through those hands, okay, so the arms should be feeling nice and strong. Then we're ready to start slowly making our way into some shoulder retractions and protractions. So we're gently letting the shoulder blades slide together before pushing back through the arms and broadening the shoulders. What we want to avoid is completely collapsing down into the shoulders, lifting them up by the ears. All right, we want to maintain nice, slow, controlled movement. Gently drawing the shoulder blades together, waking up those upper back muscles before pressing back through the hands, up through the arms and spreading the shoulders back out. Lovely, so this is a really nice postural exercise. All about stabilizing the shoulders and really giving us good body awareness. Let's just go one more time here, breathing as we do so and keeping that length through your whole body. We're then making our way into our superwoman. So we're going to start to reach our hand out to the side towards your screen. Next time you can reach it forward in front of you. Lovely, now your most important thing to remember here is to really try and keep those hips and shoulders super still and steady. If you're in your first or your second trimester, you might want to add in moving the opposite leg to arm as well now. Third trimester, ladies, let's just stick with either one arm or one leg. Very good. Now we're keeping nice and stable through our center here. So this is a really nice one for the abdominal activation, the oblique activation, okay, for the glutes and the upper body as well. All about keeping you nice and stable. Excellent. Now, one more progression here, if you're in your first or second trimester and wanting to take it, is to simply open your hand and your foot out to the side a little after reaching them off the floor. Very good. All right, let's start to finish that one off. And when you're done, you can take a little shell stretch. Just finish in your own time there. Breathing as we go. Okay, or you might prefer to just gently sit up for a moment and roll out your wrists or your shoulders. We're then going to make our way into the second side. So same setup as before. Let's really press through the hands, shoulders away from ears, tummy lifted. Make sure you're definitely starting with your other arm this time. Okay, so we're reaching it out to the side and then out in front of us. 
keeping everything else completely still. Now, this is definitely one of those ones that is a lot harder than what it actually looks. If you are doing okay, it's feeling good, you're keeping steady, first or second trimester, you can start to add in the movement of that opposite leg now. Third trimester, ladies, okay, this is a still really a nice one for the abdominal, that oblique, that glute, that upper body activation. Just moving one limb at a time. All right, one more progression here if you're wanting to take it. First and second trimester, ladies, only though, is to open that foot and arm out to the side after reaching them off the floor. Really good, everyone. Let's keep breathing. One more to go. Keeping that lovely length in the back of your neck and that slight lift in your tummy. When you finish that last one, take one more little shell stretch just for a moment. Okay, no rush as we start to slowly finish off all together. Well done, everyone. All right, so we're about halfway through our session now and I'd like to recommend you taking a brief moment to get a drink of water. Remember, it's really important you stay hydrated while being pregnant and especially while working out or do anything else that you may need to do. I hope you're enjoying our session so far and our Move Better approach is working for you. Now for our next exercise, we're going to use our chair to sit on and also potentially your broomstick that I mentioned before. So feel free to push pause on your video while you grab some water and go and set those things up. And then whenever you're ready to get back into it, just push play again and we'll move on to the next part of class. Okay, so we're sitting down in our chair now. Please sit right at the front of it, not leaning back in it. And we're going to use our brooms. So we place it down behind us, good, opening across that chest. Try and have it down behind the shoulder blades, not up by your neck. If that feels too awkward, you're welcome to just hold it in front of you instead, or completely do it without the broom. Okay, so we're sitting up nice and tall again, right on the edge of our seat, with whichever option you've chosen for your arms to begin. Then we're going to keep our hips really still as you simply start to turn your chest over to the left. Good. Then we come back through the centre before gently starting to rotate the other way. Excellent. Now these spine twists are not about kind of yanking yourself all the way around the corner. In fact, I want your eyes to just stay lined up with your chest. Okay, so you shouldn't be trying to look over your shoulder as you do this. Really important that we try and keep the pelvis as still as possible here. It's just from above the hips that we're trying to spiral and move and gently rotate. Good. Now remember you can use whichever arm option feels best for you. Feel free to change at any point. As we try and keep the two halves of our body, so the upper half and the lower half, really separate from one another. How still can you truly keep your legs and your hips as you do this? as we just rotate from above that. All right, that's going to bring about the true benefits of this exercise. Making sure that our body is safe to move in all the different planes of motion, including rotation like we're doing now. So this should feel like a lovely stretch for your back as we continue breathing and floating one way then the other, while we gently activate through the obliques to help support this rotation as well. Now you can keep going for a little bit longer if that's feeling good for you or if you're feeling that relief and like that's enough, feel free to stop at any point. Ready for some upper body work now. So we need our band. Okay, and we're either going to use our body weight to hold the band or you might like to hook it around a leg of a couch, for example. All right, we're going to lay that band on the floor and then kneel on top of it. I'm turning around so you can see my back as I do this, but you can just face whatever way works for you. So kneel on top of the band, take a hold of it, getting a reasonable amount of tension in each hand, just wrapping the hands around. Make sure it's equal on both sides. Then we're going to keep everything nice and still as we lift up tall, but start to gently retract the shoulder blades towards one another. So I'm really thinking of initiating this movement through my upper back. Okay, it's not about swinging the arms back and forth or pushing the ribcage forward. Just simply drawing the shoulder blades towards one another. Okay, we'll get rid of that band and I'll show you on the couch now. Just keep going. 
Remember, you can always pause and change your options at any point as well. Now, another good option is to do this low kneeling. If you're not comfortable up high on your knees or you're feeling a bit wobbly today, just kneel down. It still works really well. As we continue to think of sliding the shoulder blades towards one another. So this is really good for waking up our postural mu muscles, getting into the rhomboids and the lower traps. Okay, so also preparing you for when you're holding your baby one day to try and give you that good support to stay upright. Let's kneel up a little bit more now. Make our way into a gentle squat, squeezing the glutes, bringing the elbows into your waist and then gently starting to straighten the arms behind you. This is our tricep kickback. Lovely, good. So we're really thinking of squeezing into the back of the upper arms as we do this. Very important to keep the shoulder blades drawn back as we were doing in our retractions. Now I'm doing this four times, then taking a little bit of a break for the legs and the glutes. We don't want them to fatigue here. To keep yourself entertained, all right, to give a, a bit more coordination, feel free to go one arm at a time if you'd like. Just really keeping the shoulders balanced and steady, drawn back and down as you do this. Good. So keep going through this as many times as you like, but having a little break for the legs and the glutes about every four reps. Good. Arms working nice and hard. Now give them a good squeeze to reach those hands down and then squeeze them up behind you, maintaining that length through your spine. Lovely. When you've had enough, you can leave that there. Pop the hands in front of you for a gentle protracted stretch. Nice. Okay, we're ready for our cat cows now. So we'll carefully make our way back onto all fours again. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Nice long neutral spine to begin. Then we're going to gently lift in our tummy. Exhale as you push through your hands and round through your spine. Okay, just as much as bump will allow. Then we inhale and gently start to glide the other way, bringing yourselves into a little bit of extension now. Only to where feels good for your body though. Try not to force your range here. Good, we're going to keep slowly moving through this. Just a little bit of a stretch for the back. Making sure we try and lead the way with our belly button each time. Good, so think of hugging bump in towards you. So we're keeping that careful abdominal activation, keeping the spine nice and safe. Gently moving through some flexion and extension. Good. This whole time we're keeping our shoulders away from our ears. And when you're ready, you can finish off in a nice neutral position. Lovely. And then we can leave that there. Okay, so we're ready for our squats now. Let's start with the feet slightly wider than your hips, pelvis aligned and neutral, standing nice and tall. I'll face side on, but you can face wherever works for you. As we start to then bend slowly through our knees, but stick the bottom out. Good, keep bump hugged in towards you as we do this. Try that again, really thinking of bending the knees, not just collapsing that upper body forward. Okay, make sure your legs and your glutes are actually doing the work here for you. Good, let's keep this going. So we slowly bend down, stick the bottom out, lengthen the spine, and then drive through your heels to squeeze your bottom and stand back up. Very good. Now you might prefer to reach your arms out in front of you as you do this. Either option is fine. Okay, really focusing on driving the movement through the legs, not just tipping that upper body forward. Let's keep going here a few more times. Very good. Now notice how my eye line is going down towards the floor slightly. So I'm not completely dropping my head, but not lifting it up and straining my neck either. Lovely. Let's really keep those knees opening out over your toes, not letting the knees collapse towards one another. That's going to help ensure the glute medius muscles, the muscles on the outside of your hip, really important for stabilizing the pelvis, are working here too. Nice, our squats are really good for our ankle, knee and hip strength and mobility. This time I'm going to bend down and then shift my weight over into my left leg. Good, I then try and gently tap the other one out and in three times without moving my hips. Easier said than done. 
return that weight and stand back up. Good, just adjust if you need to and then we're going to go again on the other side. So we squat down first, then transfer over to your right leg. Move that left leg back and forth, out to the side three times without letting the other hip or knee wobble or lift or roll at all. Awesome, replace your weight and then stand back up. Nice, let's keep going. So these are our skaters now. Nice, we're keeping bump gently hugged towards us the whole time. We're breathing and we're really taking our time, okay? This one will work a lot better when you try and do it really slowly with lots of control. Slightly tucking that tailbone so we're not overarching, overextending into our lower back. Keeping bump hugged in towards you and keeping those knees really steady. Good, just reset whenever you need. We're going just a couple more times. Good, try and stay down at the same height. So it's just the leg moving out to the side. You're not going up and down. How steady can we be here? Really good, everyone. You should be feeling this pretty strong through those glutes now. We're also thinking of our shoulders. Good, really important we don't forget about them. Let's open the chest. Nice, finish that one off. Return your weight. Squeeze bottom to stand up. <sighs> and shake that out. Well done. All right, so we're taking our seat on our chair again now. And we're going to finish off with some lovely release stretches. So sitting at the front of your chair once again, feet right underneath knees, sitting up nice and tall. Let's gently pick up our right leg and we're going to place it in position for a figure four glute stretch. Now I'm gently pressing down on the leg slightly, try to press on your thigh rather than your knee itself and stay anchored down in that opposite hip to gently release off your glutes here. Then we can make our way onto the other side. Again, press slightly on the leg. Keep the hips balanced, sit up nice and tall and then just breathe and release into that left side. Lovely, one more moment here and then we'll replace the fleet feet flat on the floor. And we'll start our mermaid stretch. So lifting your right arm up and over. Again, staying anchored through both hips. Lovely, to feel that lovely stretch down your right side. You can hold your head wherever is comfortable before bringing yourselves all the way up, up, up and over the other way. Good. Keep that left side down. Reach through the fingertips. Hold your head as it's comfortable for you. Nice. We're going to keep moving through our mermaids a few more times now. So this is a really lovely one for getting into some of those tight spots that travel down the side of our body, our shoulder, our neck and especially down into your QL muscles. So they're down in our lower back area, okay, and if we don't release them off, it can get quite niggly down there for the pelvis and the lower back. So a mermaid stretch, I often find, is lots of people's favourite stretch for trying to bring some comfort back to your body. Excellent, good, still keeping those hips down, of course. Okay, we're going one more time each way now. I'm really reaching through the fingers. So this is not about how far you go. It's about trying to create that length, create that reach, breathing into where you feel it the most. Now we're just going to place our hand, one hand behind the back, one hand over the head, and just gently bring the neck over to the side, maybe on the diagonal line as well, for a bit of a neck release. So getting into the scalenes, lovely. And then we can change sides. Good. Now, whenever you do this kind of neck release, try not to force your head. Only put a gentle amount of pressure through that hand, just bringing the head over as much as what feels good for you. We're, of course, staying nice and tall the whole time, and now we can just roll out the shoulders a couple of times. Let's go both ways. Excellent. Then we will take a couple of deep breaths. In through the nose, out through the mouth, letting it all go. Awesome work, everyone. One more there. And then give yourselves a big clap. Well done. I hope you're feeling really good. That now brings us to the end of our session. Thank you for joining in with me. I really hope you're feeling better for it. Okay, well done for doing something really good for both yourselves and for baby today. I really do hope you're feeling good.
Now, if you have any questions or concerns at all, please feel free to comment here or just email team at 10.co.uk.